Good morning, flower friends. Welcome to the front entrance garden. Um, it's a little rough looking. I haven't been able to tackle things up here yet. I've been working on the rose alley as if you've been following along, you have seen. But I did want to share a few things I'm getting going up here and how the front garden begins this season so that you can see how it transforms through the summer. So I did want to point out that I got my pink dogwood planted and I think it's going to be great there. It's going to provide a good screen back backdrop behind this bench so that it kind of blocks the ugly driveway. Um, a fence back there wouldn't work because of the angle of the block wall that supports my front garden. Um, so I think the, the pink dogwood will be great. And then over here I have my black lace elderberry, which will get tall and provide a screen. Um, and I have a oak, oak leaf hydrangea back there. So I think those three will work great. I may put in, like over here somewhere, I have a foxglove right there, maybe some castor beans to grow up. Those grow really quick and uh, provide a pretty plant. And yes, I know castor beans are poisonous and I handle them with care. And I make sure it doesn't go to flower so that it, I, no animal will pick it up and eat it. Though I wouldn't mind feeding it to my gophers but that's a whole other topic. Alrighty then, let's get rolling and I will just show you my front garden on this May, let me see what date, May 22nd. Okay, let's get rolling. I wanted to show you, this is one of the native dogwoods uh, in my yard, my garden, and you can see where it is located right here, just on the outside of this fence. And then right here is where I've put my pink dogwood. So that's why I know this one will do well here. Um, because also if you look down here, there's a bunch of volunteer dogwoods that I have to dig out from this one, putting out seeds, but isn't it gorgeous? There's a bunch that are up in the woods up there across from me. We live across from American Forest Products. Um, as, I think it's SPI now, but anyways, up in there, tons of dogwoods and they are blooming, which is beautiful. I love living across from the woods, even though we get a lot of wild animals. Some may view that as a plus, but the bears like to get into my chickens. Um, we also have a wolf. Most people would dispute that, but my neighbor has a clear photo of him uh, walking down the street here. So a wolf has made its way to California. Anyways, over here I have a rhododendron which is doing beautiful. It's a fuchsia pink. And look at that bumblebee on my little vintage iris over here. Right next to it is Silene, also called Red Campion. And it's blooming away. These barrels of roses, I do believe, I mean, they're struggling right now. I really need to fertilize them because the, the winter snows so much of it, it really leached the nutrients out. But you can see the weeds I need to tackle. I'm not real worried about it. I'm going to take it as I can. My grass is grass. My garden is my stress-free zone, and it gets done when it gets done. But I have for along here. I have five, if all of them live. Um, it's called. Oh, I'm trying to think of it. It's a tropical drink. Uh, tequila, tequila something anyways it's a new rose from um, star roses i do believe and um, i'll check on that but i was going to put all five of them up here along this fence and i think i'd make a real pretty hedge with them and underplant them now these roses in these barrels will get relocated um, i have gopher cages i've been planting things in so they will be safe from the gophers so I also have a climbing rose in here that will do great on this fence. Um, the one I have is Jasmina. And then there's another one over um, in this section. And I have Clematis planted along the fence. So I'm hoping that fence will get a nice floral cover. I'm gonna scoot you down. Hopefully it's not too jerky. But I have all kinds of iris along here and it looks like they're doing great. I really did have a problem with the gophers eating my iris this winter. So um, we'll see what happens here, but I see a lot of buds. Last year I lost a lot with an, a late, late freeze, but this year it looks like we're free and clear. So I have a, that is a plum perfect, no, what do you mean, what is that? 
proven winners i'm looking at the tag from here oh pardon my purple it did really well there i like it stays shorter than my other garden uh flocks and um it just just does is it flocks or is it let me see let me get that tag i'm forgetting maybe it's monarda uh, yeah it's monarda sorry uh i just bought a uh flocks that's why i was thinking flocks but anyways good thing to keep your tags or make a garden map i often make a garden map but so you can see how it just needs work a lot of work here here comes reuben walking past the camera and um, it's funny, you see this, these bulbs, the um, grape hyacinths, they were not planted out this far. The gophers have relocated them for me. So the path needs to be reapplied, some more bark, but, and there's iris right in the middle of the path. So they were, the, they were moving plants quite dramatically. So you can see, as I said, it needs a lot of work, but there's little things that are blooming. I'm gonna show you um, my black lace elderberry behind my bench really quick. You can see how that's doing. I just moved it and I'm surprised it really didn't even show any signs of shock because I really had to dig down to get it up. But let me turn you around. So you can see it right there and it's doing beautifully and i know it's going to get quite tall It'll probably get to six feet this summer and it will be a perfect screen for the um, driveway below and you can see it back there there's my gravel that i'm putting in my pathway in the back just do one bucket at a time and uh, slowly but surely the job will get done and you can see what's going on back there and this angle for my pink dogwood i think i just no, that's going to be gorgeous and I'm going to love it. I have a lot of bindweed coming up. I've never had, sorry if I'm wiggling me too much, bindweed come up like it is. Look at this whole patch right here that I really need to dig up. Reuben, you need some nice grass to eat? Mm -hmm. Anyways, more uh, iris along here and it looks like they're, I'm going to get beautiful blooms. We are going to be gone for a week, and I'm certainly hoping they don't start while we're gone, but I have a feeling they will. We are, we have been having 80 degrees, up to 80 degrees with some very warm nights, but it is to cool down. So maybe that'll slow everything down for me. So let's go over and let's look at my flocks over there. That is doing so gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? This is creeping flocks. I have this lavender, and then I have a fuchsia pink, but it blooms as the lavender is fading. And I cannot tell where the fuchsia pink is and the lavender ends. The fuchsia pink doesn't seem to be quite as hardy or as um, vigorous as the lavender, but it's such a beautiful carpet this time of year. And all this soil up here, it is just rock, rocky, rocky. So um, I love that it will grow. My butterfly bush there looks really sad. I have to prune them back hard, hard in early November because the snow will break them. And one year it, it almost killed it when I didn't get it pruned back hard in November. Um, so it's finally sprouting out some growth. You always think it's dead <laughs> because it just looks like it's dead until it really starts warming up. So just take a note of that. If, with butterfly bushes, um, they can seem dead w well into spring until it warms up. But there's tons of volunteer foxgloves up here. I have more iris. I have roses, which will bloom. Um, I have Zinfandel, the hydrangea that's leaning. Right there, that is Zinfandel. Then I have a vintage rose and the, my limelight hydrangea there is getting, I um, tied it up because so, it was leaning like the other one, the heavy snows. Uh, bent it over and it wasn't recovering well so I tied it up and I put a new clematis up against the fence right there that is my bargain basement clematis that I got at Lowe's people thought it was dead so I got it for bargain price and more and my Eden rose is coming along it's got buds all over it this I mean the snows really busted it usually I have it tied very well to the arbor but our snows came so early that were heavy, I didn't have a chance to do it. And so I really had to do a hard prune on it, but 
it's recovering. I was afraid I wouldn't get an abundance of blooms, but I can see it's just covered. So I'm thrilled with that. So let's look back this way. My ajuga, I know a lot of people consider it a bully. Let me put the camera down here. My ajuga is doing beautiful. Look at that. And every morning I come out here and there are bumblebees all over it. So I know the bumblebees are enjoying it. Now I keep it contained. I cut it back uh, out of the bed towards the sidewalk so that it just stays contained in this area. And I may put some on this side. Right now it's heavily mulched, but I can put some over here and, and contain it there so I have a matching on each side. So it kind of brings some harmony. I'm just going to move you around to this and you can see the garden in its before state. The, these tulips, I didn't plant tulips in my two round raised beds this year. These are from last year and um, at first they didn't do great. And then all of a sudden, when it warmed up, they started doing beautifully. And um, this one over here did, was sparse compared to, let's move this way, compared to this one. This one was really full. And the only difference is this one gets a tiny bit more sun. So that's all I could figure. Um, and there's also um, Olivia Austin Rose in here. And let me see if it's, oh, yep, it's coming back. I thought it had died, but it's coming back. Hopefully it's coming back above the graft and not below. That's I usually prefer buying own root roses because here they have a rough time in my climate. And even if a rose should die back to the roots, it will come back true. So I will inspect that later. So you just kind of got a look of the overview of the front and where I have to go from here. And I will share again probably in a few weeks and you will see a big difference. I will make sure and share when the iris are blooming. I'll just do an entire iris tour and share that with you. And you'll be probably be surprised at how much, how dramatically this whole area changes. So that, my friends, is a tour of the front garden before. That's all I can say. Now, like I said, this is the end of May and I was further along last year because we didn't have such late snows or heavy snows, but we, the water uh, was great. And I know there's, the weeds are abundant because we had extra water this year, precipitation, but um, like, unlike last year, I don't have to focus on the irrigation because that's all in and done. And I could just focus on planting, moving things and getting things in. And I'm also going to do, and I'll share a lot more on it. Um, I'm gonna be planting some common buckwheat in patches through here to help with the soil, um, to treat the soil. And uh, it, green manures are great. A lot of times people use this when they pull out, like uh, when they're growing in raised beds and they wanna just have a cover crop for a while, but I'm, I'm gonna utilize it during the growing season. And I'll show you how I do that and explain more why. So I hope you enjoyed this quick video of the front garden and I'll see you next time. I think we're gonna be planting cucumbers. So I'll see you then.